everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. The webinar will start in about 16 minutes from now. So uh, again, uh, thanks for your interest in this very interesting topic. I hope you will like the talk and uh, I hope that you have seen all the information that I have already shared on um, on our groups. If you are not a member, then I share you the link to join my WhatsApp group. Thank you everyone for joining us today for this wonderful webinar. It's so nice to see you all here virtually. Please use the chat box to share your comments and your questions uh, during the webinar to our respected worthy speaker, Professor Marco Fontanella. Uh, again, I want to thank you for your show for showing interest. And I also wish to tell you that um, you will require to complete a quiz uh, after the webinar to get your attendance certificate. This time the attendance certificates will be generated automatically after the completion and submission of the quiz. The quiz is simple MCQ based, um, you know, a, a, only 10 MCQs in the, in, the, in the quiz. And I've used the Google Forms, which is I think um, a more easier way to do the quizzes. So again, thank you very much. Those who have just joined, I really wish to welcome you all to this webinar. The lecture will start shortly uh, in about 13 minutes from now. And again, um, I wish to tell you that the, that the certificates will be auto-generated after the submission of the post-webinar quiz. This webinar quiz is um, non-graded. You don't have to acquire a certain passing percentage to uh, obtain your attendance certificate. So basically just consider it a practice type of a, of a quiz and it's all, only for your own knowledge because I really wish everyone to have, you know, practice and to just enjoy the, enjoy the quiz and have an idea of what we are are really doing. So please just, um, I will share the link to the quiz during the webinar, by the end of the webinar. So you just have to uh, use that particular Google form and uh, submit your quiz and the and the attendance certificate will be generated automatically and will be emailed to you. It will be a personalized certificate. So there will be no hassle and there will be no waiting for anyone to, you know, download the certificate because it will be emailed directly to you immediately after submission of your quiz. So again, thank you so much. Please use the question, uh, the, the chat box to share your questions, your comments, your suggestions, or if, is there anything that you wish to share? And I hope that those who are in my uh, WhatsApp group uh, have all the copies of the paper, the editorial Professor Fontanella has published about the matter, the University of the Metaverse. And if you are not in the group, then I will be sharing my um, link for you to join the WhatsApp group so that you can get all the updates uh, that, um, you know, all the updates about the news projects and everything that I do quite often. So again, thank you very, very much for joining us today and choose the chat box and share from where you are watching the webinar. I will be so happy to see you and meet you virtually.
Uh, welcome, Professor Pantanara. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, sir, you are muted. I, I'm sorry. I, you yeah, have, you, you have a crown on your head. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. <laughs> I'm just trying my very best, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's so glad. It's so nice to see you here virtually and to meet you. And I was uh, talking uh, about the webinar and the topic with the with the attendees. And um, you you have published a wonderful editorial, sir, on the same on yeah. the same topic. Uh, just a, a bit uh, view on your future. You know, quite strange, but nice. Thank you for inviting me here. It's a pleasure. <laughs> always we can uh, is it, a strange topic so today we can uh, i think dream together about your future not my future because i'm a, i'm an old surgeon now and uh, i think we can dream about your future Sir, I think that our future depends upon all the mentors like you who have contributed generously in the development of neurosurgery and who are still affiliated with educating those, even those students who are who you, we cannot even see uh, virtually. So I think that we nice. all owe you big. It's nice. So it's so great. So again, thank you very, very much for um, spending time from your very busy schedule. It means so much to us. And mm -hmm. I think all neurosurgeons of my age and all the junior neurosurgeons are really grateful to all the wonderful uh, contribution of mentors like you in the progress of neurosurgery and in training. Because during the COVID-19 pandemic, we could never imagine that we will be able to keep up with neurosurgery and to keep learning. But it was like a silver lining that uh, we were able to learn directly from legends like you so I think that it's it's already some big. I, 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 no, my I keep I keep learning from you, uh, and I think I will learn uh, for many many years uh, in the future from you, from my residents, uh, and so on. My residents uh, have a, a much more fresh uh, brain than me, you know. <laughs> so is, I the believe... future is of them. I believe that it is uh, the mentor who counts because we could be we are nothing without uh, mentorship because I do believe that many smart brains uh, get wasted without a proper mentorship. So I think that uh, still it is all about the people like you who are there to educate us, to guide us and to encourage us to be our best selves. So again, thank you very, very much, sir. And thank you very, very much for trusting young neurosurgeons to be something um, helpful, someone helpful later in life. So uh, nice. again, thank you so much, sir. Sir, uh, I would like you to, I would like to request you to kindly uh, check your, if you like, if you can test your screen share function. I have yeah. make you a co-host for this uh, so that it's easy for you okay. i can uh, try can you see it yes yes sir we can do we could do thank you okay. very very much uh, this is the okay Yes, exactly. It's perfect, sir. Perfect, sir. Thank you so, so much, sir. I think that we are, um, um, there are still, still six minutes for us uh, yeah, to yeah. start, yes. But uh, people are still joining in. Uh, so if you like, sir, we can start now because uh, the, the attendees will keep joining us during the webinar. Okay, if okay. You say, sir. Yes, you sir. Will, uh... Uh, exactly, sir. Sir, I will just give a brief introduction. Obviously, we all know you so well uh, from all your wonderful lectures. Even during the COVID pandemic, you have conducted amazing webinars, and I've been an attendee myself. So uh, I think that you do not actually need a need a, a introduction. But for the matter of you know, for the sake of formality, I would be happy to give a small introduction. So again, the first of all, I want to welcome everyone to the webinar. Those who are in Zoom and those who are watching us on neurosurgical.tv as well as those who are watching us directly on my YouTube channel because so many people are there in all the three platforms, which is uh, good, which is amazing. Okay. So I wish to welcome everyone there. So the recording will be available and the attendance certificates will be generated automatically after the submission of the post-webinar quiz. So you will not have to wait yeah. uh, once you submit the 
at and the certificate will be emailed directly to you immediately. So the term metaverse was first coined by Neil Stephenson in the novel, um, which, uh, you know, many of you must have read it, which was known as the Snow Crash. And uh, it became a household world when uh, Facebook rebranded its corporate identity to Meta in October 2021. So imagine a virtual world where billions of people live, work, shop, learn, interact with each other all from the comfort of their own couches. So it's something very, you know, futuristic, very amazing and it's fascinating. So in this world, the computer screens we use today to connect to a worldwide web of information have become portals to a 3D virtual realm that is palpable and real life like. So the metaverse is described as the inevitable evolution of the internet. So I would like to consider it neurosurgery as the star track of neurosurgery. So I hope uh, you will all enjoy and I'm, I'm really thrilled to welcome Professor Marco Fontanella to deliver a wonderful talk on neurosurgery of the metaverse. Professor Fontanella is the professor of neurosurgery in the University of Brescia in Italy. And he's a part of the Global Neurosurgery Committee of the WFNS and is also assistant treasurer of the WFNS. Most of us already know him, but it's for the matter, it's the sake for, of formality that I need to give a few lines about him. And um, I have also shared a link to his wonderful editorial. Uh, you, most of you might have um, already downloaded the PDF and read it. So again, sir, thank you very, very, very much for accepting my invitation to deliver this wonderful lecture with us. In, in, it's, it's exclusive, it's so futuristic, and I don't think that uh, such a topic have ever been um, discussed before in any webinar, so I was really thrilled to listen to you and all the futuristic concepts and all the things that we can imagine and dream, um, as especially as new neurosurgeons and young neurosurgeons. Uh, so thank you very, very much, sir, for coming today. You are warmly welcome from me, and uh, I think all of the young neurosurgeons who are all the um, uh, all around and uh, online as well. So again, so thank you so much. The floor is all yours now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, to be invited by you. Uh, it's a strange topic. Uh, is uh, I never talk about this before, and um, and uh, it was quite strange for me that uh, I realized that. Uh, mm, are interested in this topic not uh, only medical doctors but uh, even uh, uh, engineers uh, phys physician uh, physics uh, and uh, other specialties uh, and uh, not only surgeons uh, not only neurosurgeons really now uh, some people like to know uh, how we can imagine the future uh, we all imagine the future. I think uh, not my generation, but uh, your generation, the younger generation, uh, now is uh, in a very important period of uh, uh, neurosurgical and the surgical life. Because uh, in the future, really, the augmented reality, mixed reality, and uh, all this word of the metaverse can uh, really uh, help us uh, in uh, in our uh, surgical procedures but uh, we have uh, to drive it uh, we have uh, to rule uh, this this world because uh, uh, from from you from us but uh, especially from you depends uh, all the words uh, of uh, um, of the medical uh, training and not only the training uh, but uh, on uh, the word of uh, uh, surgery and of neurosurgery so i think this is a quite a strange topic and we will uh, uh, talk about metamers uh, together uh, so I, I i'm really excited to think what you really uh, how how can you imagine your future in this uh, in this uh, neurosurgical new world? Uh, so I hope you can see my screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can do uh, see your okay. screen. I think you will start the slide share. Okay. Thank so, you so much, perfect. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, you know that uh, neurosurgery is not a, a sorry, is not uh, a, a um, 
the, the first uh, uh, surgical procedures in your surgery were uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. And uh, now in uh, about uh, 150 years, uh, less than 200 years, uh, we have to imagine a very new world, uh, a world completely different from the one uh, that uh, there was uh, uh, in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, in the beginning of 20th century, of the, in the middle of 20th century, there was no uh, general anesthesia. Uh, this was uh, in, um, uh, like in these days, uh, 16 October of 1846, uh, that uh, in uh, uh, Massachusetts General Hospital, uh, there was performed the first general anesthesia. And this was a, a great uh, change in uh, our surgical uh, um, manner uh, how to handle our patients. But uh, if you see the uh, Cushing uh, OR, this is the Cushing OR, I think in uh, um just after the second world war so not so many years ago less than 100 years ago uh, you can realize that uh, there were no instruments of course no microscope the microscope uh, uh, was uh, in 1970s uh, but uh, even no um anesthesia machine the the nurse was the and uh, the doctors uh, uh, where uh, uh, performed the general anesthesia and there is only patients and doctors and so on. An empty big OR, very, very different from the OR now that uh, are in Europe and all over the world now. Uh, in Europe, was the beginning of, uh, uh, of neurosurgery was uh, in um, Sweden by um, Professor Oliver Krona, and then, of course, uh, you all know Cushy and then uh, Cushing and then the, in the U.S. Uh, big change with the instruments. Uh, they enter from the 70s. Uh, uh, in our uh, OR came a lot of instruments. Uh, microscope uh, uh, was the big change uh, in uh, our surgery. You know that two things are very important uh, uh, in, uh, in neurosurgery that are light and magnification. And uh, uh, microscope, but now endoscope, exoscope, uh, bring light and magnification in our field. So the, uh, the entering of these instruments was very important and was uh, from the end of the 60s at the beginning of the 70s uh, uh, from uh, uh, Yazagil and many, many others, others. Now we have uh, in all our uh, OR a lot, uh, sorry, a lot of uh, instruments uh, uh, such as a microscope, uh, very nice microscopes, uh, uh, neuro navigation. Uh, we all uh, use neuro navigate to neuro navigate any tumor, any pathologies inside the brain and aneurysms and so on. Um, the CT and the uh, NMR inside uh, our RRs uh, are very important. Uh, exoscope, you see here an exoscope uh, that is uh, bringing light and magnification in uh, our uh, ORs. Uh, I wrote uh, a, an editorial about the change uh, between uh, microscopy and uh, exoscopy. And this is very, I think, uh, a very hot topic uh, because uh, uh, I know that uh, in Europe, uh, at least in Europe, uh, uh, a lot of neurosurgeons uh, use only exoscope and no more uh, microscopes. And uh, again, uh, mm, and again, uh, uh, now the robotic is, the, uh, again, of course, echography. You all know an echography and uh, many uh, tools that can monitor not only evoked potential, but uh, really um, in awake surgery, many tools uh, that uh, can monitor the state of the patients during surgery. Robotic is not very used in uh, uh, neurosurgery, but I think it will be more and more used uh, in uh, the future. 
Now in general surgery or in orthopedic or in um, urologic surgery is very used. And uh, uh, I think in the future, robotic will be more and more used for the for his precision. Uh, the, the, the big thing of uh, neurosurgery is to be precise uh, on the on a, on a target uh, on a small uh, um, a small tumor or a small lesion. And so the robotic will be uh, more and more used in the future. But this is on all the present. Uh, we we all have all these tools. Uh, and uh, uh, what uh, my my mentor, my old mentor, was always saying me that uh, uh, a tool is a tool. And uh, if you are a fool, <laughs> you still uh, will be a fool, uh, uh, even if you are uh, the best tool. So tools are very important. Microscope, microscope is very important. Uh, I think I cannot uh, uh, perform a the the most uh, uh, of operations uh, without microscope without uh, monitoring without uh, other tools uh, but uh, if you um, know how to to become a very good neurosurgeon uh, is uh, up to you is up to of your training uh, of uh, uh, of the numbers of patients that you treat uh, and of course, the training that you perform on, on in the lab, uh, usually nowadays still on uh, cadavers, uh, but uh, uh, it's very important to study. is much better to to buy a book than a tool. And uh, I think that uh, we improve a lot our uh, neurosurgery, but with uh, many, many tools that improve uh, a lot of the, the, the outcome of our patients. But uh, this is just uh, instrument in our hands. Uh, then uh, what, what is mm, the, the new step of our, uh, of our uh, neurosurgery? There is a really a change or we are managing only tools for the future. Well, uh, nowadays, we, 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 we start to uh, use uh, the, what we call the extended reality these, uh, technologies. We have to be clear what, is the, what are these extended uh, reality technologies. Uh, we call uh, virtual reality. Uh, the virtual reality immerses the user in an uh, in entirely uh, artificial environment uh, and the real world is out from virtual reality. So you, are, you have uh, a, a visor and, uh, uh, and uh, you can be in a, a beautiful mountain up and on the top, but the real world is uh, completely out. The augmented reality, and uh, we, we, we are now using augmented and mixed reality in our OR, uh, allows uh, the user to visualize uh, virtual objects uh, that are superimposed on real physical world. Uh, well, I, I now use uh, quite a lot of this augmented reality in my OR, uh, the objects are superimposed or what, what they call injected injected in your microscope. Uh, looking uh, through the lenses of the microscope, you can see the tumor inside the brain, the, the vessel, the fibers uh, of, the, um, of your NMR. Uh, that are superimposed uh, uh, of the brain. And uh, I think this is very useful, but I think this is, this is a tool. This is not a metaverse. This is not a, a completely, uh, I'm, I'm there, I'm there uh, physically there. And uh, uh, I am the surgeon, it's not uh, uh, the microscope or the robots that is driving me but uh, uh, I drive uh, the robot. And uh, the mixture of reality objects are merged into a real environment uh, 
um, where users can manipulate and uh, interact with them. So uh, these are three different uh, way of uh, um, of watching uh, uh, our extended uh, reality technologies. Of course, uh, this mixed reality represents a, a great uh, resource, uh, especially uh, for education, especially for uh, un to understand the uh, neuroanatomy, anatomy, uh, visualizing uh, virtual models uh, superimposed on the physical world uh, with the possibility to interact with them, we change uh, the um, way uh, and uh, uh, the the the, the um, in in and the object uh, in uh, within the space uh, and uh, uh, to project uh, digital contents uh, on the object uh, i think I, I don't know if you you know that uh, uh, this is uh, app surgeon I, I, you will see a lot of, of uh, instrument with uh, their name here but i'm not connected uh, I am giving you my disclosure that I'm not connected with any one of these uh, tools, but uh, in Brescia, uh, one of our young, uh, he, he was young at that day's uh, young residents, uh, Federico Nicolosi, thought uh, this uh, app surgeon tool. I don't know if you already uh, seen it and where you can simulate uh, the approach, uh, uh, simulate uh, the way to go uh, to uh, carotid artery or uh, cranial nerves uh, and so on. And th so the, this uh, um, mixed reality is uh, very useful, I think, for education. And nowadays is uh, very useful this uh, for education and uh, uh, simulation. Um, uh of course uh, you you can like in in this case you can uh, um, simulate an approach without a pathology or uh, uh, and uh, with mixed reality uh, you can uh, perform uh, a, a simulate uh, surgical uh, uh, procedure and uh, uh, for uh, and uh, to uh, move the patients, uh, change direction of your surgery, and uh, and so on and so on, and uh, and, and it is very useful uh, uh, to uh, before I think before to perform, for example, a, a cadaver lab. Uh, the tool is quite cheap and is very good for education. But uh, if you, um, with uh, augmented reality, with uh, uh, mixed reality, you can uh, also um, visualize before surgery uh, a, an object, a tumor, a lesion inside the brain, and think how to approach it. And is uh, I think is very useful for the surgeon that can uh, realize, uh, for example, the veins uh, near the 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 AVMs uh, and uh, or near a tumor and so on. But uh, we are using it uh, also for the patients and now ask more and more to see what uh, you will perform on his uh, skull on his brain and where is uh, the um, uh, where is the tumor? How can uh, you reach his tumor? And uh, uh, and uh, in this way, uh, for any case, uh, you can think uh, uh, with your team, uh, which is uh, the best uh, um, the best way to reach uh, the lesion. And uh, in this team, you can uh, uh, ask uh, to the patients uh, to join the team and uh, discuss all together what you will do uh, in uh, the OR. I think this is uh, the present. Mm, the present uh, we are approaching and we are using these tools more and more in, uh, in, the, in our institutes and uh, are useful uh, especially for young neurosurgeons uh, 
just to understand uh, what can be the the problems related to the surgical um, uh, procedures and uh, and can uh, and we can uh, really uh, discuss together what uh, uh, is the best thing to do on that patient but uh, um uh, so this is uh, uh, again inside the, um, the or the augmented reality and uh, and uh, even outside for education and to control uh, the the what is uh, uh what will be the surgery with uh, the uh, patients you see here with the patient uh, what uh, you, you how you can reach a lesion um the there are uh, several uh, papers uh, on uh, the use of uh, mixed reality i show you just this because it's an italian paper uh, that plans uh, uh, how to approach uh, the uh, rupture intracranial aneurysms uh, and uh, when you see the aneurysm on the patients uh, you can superimpose the for example where is the artery this is a, a, a anterior communicating aneurysm where is the artery uh, with a, a the a2 segments uh, and uh, the uh, one segment uh, and the uh, um, cranial nerves uh, the optic nerve here and uh, of course uh, uh, this tool can be very useful uh, especially for young neurosurgeon and uh, this is the tool uh, i don't know if you if some of you use uh, something like this in the or but i think it's quite nice and uh, can be quite useful uh, for aneurysm i don't use it very much but i think it could be nice uh, for especially for young doctors uh, to see uh, what what uh, an extender a mixed reality can be on uh, the uh, on on some cases i think they did uh, a few cases five patients you see here just they check on five patients and uh, they ask uh, to the team uh, what they think about this uh, and uh, on uh, a, a score of five uh, the score of all the team was that uh, the tool is very useful even for educational uh, purpose uh, and uh, for case discussion but also for clinical practice of course uh, is uh, improvable this and uh, uh, it will be uh, improved in the future much more precise uh, uh, i think uh, as you see here very very good for positioning uh, of the patient uh, because it is uh, uh, in the space to position the patient exactly and to reach uh, the aneurysm uh, quite quickly is very comfortable and uh, easy to to use. Um, uh, to is is not so precise uh, as you see the the ruler, so you can see a an aneurysm bigger or smaller um in uh, relation what uh, is uh, in real world uh, but uh, i think uh, these are this all these can be improved and improve a lot but now uh we have really to think what uh, we call metaverse what we what is our thinking of the future of the metaverse um all what i i show you are tools uh, uh, graphical tools, uh, uh, mixed reality tools uh, that helps the neurosurgeon. But what uh, really uh, is uh, the metaverse? Do metaverse uh, we uh, intend uh, a new world, a completely new world? The definition of uh, uh, metaverse are uh, several. Uh, these are three definitions. Uh, uh, is is a collective virtual space uh, sh um, shared space uh, created by the conversion of uh, virtual enhanced physical reality and physical persistent virtual space uh, 
including the sum of all virtual worlds, augmented reality, and the internet. So is a new world, is a new space, a virtual new space. Or the second definition is a, a virtual reality space in which a user can interact with a computer generated environment and other use and other users. So in this metaverse, you can interact with another user that helps you. Uh, for example, a, a, a user that is not present inside the OR, but uh, through a, for example, a robot can interact with you, helping you uh, operating on the patient. Uh, of course, uh, require multiple technologies and trends to function, including uh, all these things, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, flexible work styles. Uh, you, have, you should have uh, a net mounted display, a, a cloud uh, where all this information are stored, and the, inter the, the Internet of Things, the DOT, and uh, a, a very fast connection, 5G connection, and artificial intelligence and special computing. So is a new world where you are, where you are present, you can be present, uh, physically present, uh, or you are present as, uh, it's strange to say this thing, these, these words, but uh, you can be present as an avatar. So uh, interacting with the others uh, and uh, uh, speaking uh, and, uh, in, and uh, operating on the patients with the other. Um, so what uh, will be the uh, real uh, uh, we we have to imagine now how can we use uh, this uh, uh, new world uh, this uh, metaverse world first of all uh, we know that uh, we are not very good uh, all uh, we are a lot of, in the world uh, a lot of people a lot of minds uh, that uh, thinks uh, all uh, different uh, way of thinking and we know that uh, um, even uh, the simple ga guidelines uh, such as the severe traumatic brain injury guidelines uh, are not very well followed by the neurosurgeons <laughs> we we performed this survey and uh, we realized that uh, um, a simple patients uh, that uh, have uh, a, a traumatic brain injury can be um, uh, can be cured in the many different ways uh, in uh, throughout uh, the world uh, in uh, different uh, countries uh, or uh, in the same countries by different uh, medical doctors and neurosurgeons uh, and the neurosurgeons are not very good in following guidelines i don't know what you you think about yeah. this but uh, is we are not very good in uh, following guidelines uh, so what well, how can the metaverse can help us sorry can you hear me so we can do actually there was some interruption over here i've uh, fixed it thank you someone had unmuted ah okay thank you sir. Um, uh, can I go on? Yes. Yes, yeah, sure, please. Sir. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, so uh, for the, the first big problem we have in your surgery and the doctor has uh, is the indication of for surgery. Of course, the indication of for surgery is very, can be different, of course. Uh, we cannot uh, follow the guidelines uh, we cannot uh, even uh, understand uh, and know all the information that uh, there are on the net uh, and so uh, we we can uh, the, the patient can be cured uh, very in, in different ways uh, and uh, not cured very well um, uh, so i think that uh, all these guidelines uh, in this uh, metaverse world can uh, 
can be summarized, checked and stored by an artificial intelligence uh, way. And uh, in, um, in this way, uh, one of us uh, can introduce uh, the pictures uh, of the of the patients, uh, I mean, the uh, CT scan and MR and all the pictures and the story of uh, the uh, patients uh, and can, uh, can have, uh, I mean, can be suggested uh, for the best uh, treatment uh, uh, following the guidelines uh, for that case. And of course, this can be a, a, a very big help for us because uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, meta-analysis uh, guidelines, uh, but uh, if, even if uh, we are a good uh, student and, uh, and we keep seeing all the guidelines throughout the world, uh, we, we cannot uh, understand and know everything. And so a system like this can be very useful for us and can guide us for the best treatment of the patients. But I'd like to, to know your point of view about this. This can be the first step of our future indication of surgery. Before surgery, should there should be the indication for surgery that if... Uh, a, an artificial uh, intelligence system can suggest us suggest us what is the best indication for to for example uh, for operate or not operate a, an aneurysm uh, uh, accounting from uh, the size of the aneurysm uh, the age of the patient so on and so on would be very very useful this is the first thing the second one is uh, uh, that we can uh, talk about uh, is uh, to operate uh, a, a, a patient from remote. This is very nice. And to have uh, a, a surgeon within the team, I can be one surgeon, two surgeon in the OR, difficult case, but I can have uh, mm, my friend Michael Lawton that uh, operates with me from uh, the Barrow Institute. Uh, he operates uh, in Italy and or in India or somewhere you like uh, with the mic. Not uh, nowadays uh, we have what we call mentoring. Mentoring. I mean uh, someone that uh, is uh, uh, in contact uh, online that uh, it can see the uh, the your operating field through the microscope that is is connected with the microscope the azoscope or whatever you like and uh, that uh, says uh, no you are uh, uh, you are dissecting um, too shortly that uh, and go farther and uh, you can uh, suggest us things to do but this is another thing is uh, really operating with you through a through a robot and i think is a big change no one did it uh, in your surgery uh, someone did it in general surgery to operate uh, a patient from uh, remote like uh, in the uh, in the little story I, I wrote uh, on uh, uh, on the journal on neurosurgical sciences, uh, uh, the chief is uh, um, is always uh, uh, performing surgery from remote uh, uh, within the the um, uh, the theater and uh, within the other team that uh, are present uh, in the in the OR um, and could be really a very, very big change. I think uh, we need uh, many years, uh, I think um, more than 10 years uh, to do this, uh, but uh, it can be a really a big change, uh, even for uh, uh, people that are operated, uh, for example, in a remote region. And uh, if you uh, perform a connection like this uh, and a robot, uh, the, a man uh, very far away, can uh, uh, operate on the patient with the help uh, of another neurosurgeon inside the OR. 
So, Robotic, I like to know your opinion about robot and remote surgery. But um, there is a, another way of thinking. Um, I think uh, um, I used to uh, to record and to store all my surgery. So I have uh, all uh, uh, the um, videos of uh, not all, but many of my surgery. Uh, aneurysms, tumors, uh, I think you know that uh, I'm especially a vascular surgeon, uh, so AVMs uh, and uh, many other surgery. And uh, uh, the engineers uh, explained me that uh, uh, all this uh, material uh, can be stored and can be visualized through a, um, a artificial intelligence uh, method and uh, this uh, can uh, um, realize uh, a, a, a copy of me, an avatar of me, a, a simulated surgeon that works just like I used to work. And this is quite strange for me that uh, uh, some uh, all my experience uh, can be stored and can be used to um, cure other patients in the future, uh, just like uh, I used to do now. Um, imagine what does this mean? means that uh, um, that when a surgeon uh, die uh, his experience is not dying with him but uh, can be of course ma manipulated but can be summarized and used to uh, work for uh, uh, for other cases for other patients Artificial intelligence is not a human intelligence. So artificial intelligence uh, uh, is repeating exactly what you used to do. It's not inventing other things. So if uh, there is a case completely different uh, from the others, uh, of you, of you, or, or you can, if you like. Uh, to change your uh, um, uh, usual way of uh, operating on, you cannot do it, the, 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 I mean, uh, the artificial in intelligence cannot do this. Only the surgeon can uh, change himself. But uh, um, it's uh, quite strange to think that all your experience can be summarized can be uh, checked by an artificial intelligence system and can be reproposed to um, to operate a case. So I think uh, uh, it will be a very in, in the far future this, uh, but uh, of course it is it's very strange to to think uh, something like this. Uh, and. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, if uh, a, a single experience can be summarized, you can also summarize uh, the all you have, all the uh, imagine all the videos that are uh, uh, if you if you um, search for I don't know uh, cerebral aneurysm or middle uh, cerebral artery aneurysm on YouTube, you can uh, see thousand of no, hundred of videos but uh, if you um, put together a thousand and thousand of videos of all the surgeons of uh, the world uh, and uh, how they reach the aneurysm clip the aneurysm and to handle the the brain uh, even tight brain and so on you can uh, uh, summarize uh, a, a, a very big experience and uh, I think in the uh, in the future all this experience that is not experience of one surgeon but uh, of many many top surgeons 
for example, top vascular surgeon can be summarized and a system of artificial intelligence can repropose how to operate on a patient in a system like this. So with a robot that has information from many, many neurosurgeons and can perform itself or himself the patient the surgery for that patient the singular patient so we can think uh, i think that now we cannot imagine what will be in another 150 years uh, neurosurgery neurosurgery was born in uh, um, uh, 150 years ago but uh, in the next 150 years uh, neurosurgery will be very very different uh, because uh, uh, from uh, the era of the tools uh, that uh, now we live in the era of the tools, beautiful tools and mixed reality, we are moving uh, uh, to the era of uh, the artificial intelligence and uh, of uh, the um, uh, metaverse world. And uh, it will be very different, uh, very, very different. Uh, of course, what we are losing and uh, what uh, uh, we should not lose, what we must not lose, uh, we must not lose uh, the relationship with the patient. And I think that uh, a young guy uh, that likes to become a medical doctor uh, should know that uh, our uh, work, uh, your sur surgical work uh, or medical work, uh, will never die. There will always will be a neurosurgeon and the patient, and uh, we will be patient. And uh, we are now your neurosurgeons. And uh, this relationship between uh, the doctor and the patient. Uh, uh is uh, one of the most important thing that we have uh, and we have to keep it uh, for the future always keep it for the future because it's really very very important uh, for us uh, and uh, even for the future the artificial intelligence will be a wonderful work world uh, the patient will be uh, cured much uh, better than now but uh, uh, of course uh, uh, we are not uh, immortal and uh, the, de the death uh, will always always exist so our patient will will die and we will die of course and uh, uh, what uh, will never die is uh, our love and our relationship between us between our community, between doctors and uh, from doctors to the patient. So I like uh, in this uh, in uh, this speech to introduce you uh, what you think. Uh, and is uh, I left I spoke for forty minutes, uh, and now I leave you many times to 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 not to ask question because i have not answered to the to the question it's just a dream uh, how can we dream our future uh, because i think uh, you will have uh, a very big uh, uh, change in your professional life because uh, you see in uh, i think five years ago uh, very few of us uh, um, knew what uh, really artificial intelligence uh, is uh, and how uh, is important uh, in our life. Nowadays, many of us use uh, chat GPT or uh, other uh, systems. And I think it, briefly, uh, it will uh, um, come in our hospitals uh, and in our professional lives. It will help us a lot. We, uh, at the beginning, uh, we'll, um, we will treat it uh, like uh, a um, someone that suggests us uh, uh, something, so like a suggestion, but uh, and um, 
uh, artificial intelligence or these uh, methods uh, uh, will not uh, um, never uh, um, replace uh, the human being. You are from uh, different sides in the world. Uh, I think uh, very few of, of you are from Europe. I'd like really to know what you think. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the insightful lecture and very interesting lecture indeed. And like you have very nicely uh, mentioned, actually, I, I had to work with the ILAE with uh, there was a project that we were working on, on, uh, you know, on the risk factors for the BTE for post-traumatic epilepsy. And I, in fact, I uh, suggested that we should implement some guidelines and uh, we should uh, actually, I proposed an algorithm that could be integrated using artificial intelligence into your daily practice and um, like uh, in your radiograph so that that can actually give you a guidance that whether this patient is having a higher risk of development of post-traumatic epilepsy and those uh, like it is stratification tools so like you have very nicely mentioned it can be easily integrated with so many things even a simpler technology not uh, a very high level of technology if you just um, like you have very nicely mentioned about the guidelines because um, I do believe that some of the juniors who are working uh, in, in especially in law Long hours. Many juniors do need a supervision or a senior advice. And I believe that if uh, some advice in the form of um, algorithms and artificial intelligence can be provided, it will be really beneficial. Obviously, there will be a need of human uh, decision making because it is just a machine, so we cannot rely on it 100%, but it can be, it can act like guidelines. Sometimes there are some points that people do miss or they do not remember. So I, I really, really believe, and I actually wrote a paper on it and also on, um, you know, on um, on hydrocephalus that these things could be implemented. And sir, I, I believe that uh, the e-aspect score is already there and there, uh, and AI can actually detect so many brain lesions and can assess uh, its location and so many other things that we can actually actually exploit this fact and can um, uh, extend it further in the development of more helpful ideas that can help physicians. So it, it, it's really, really impressive. Uh, again, thank you so much. And people were taking a lot of interest. There are so yes, many. I, <laughs> yes, uh, I, I see all the, the, the question. It is beautiful, <laughs> really beautiful. Yes, I, I was perhaps, uh, mm, I like to say that uh, even in future, the the mentorship to have uh, really a a mentor uh, I, I i had big mentors uh, in uh, uh for example in the us uh, dr cassell and big mentors uh, and was very important for me even to see their life uh, the way of living the way of thinking the way to approach in the the, the patient uh, uh how they were the, the fear they had uh, in the or this the masters uh, i was i had the fortune to see um in the theater uh, dr Br drake uh, drake was a <laughs> incredible man right. you i think you 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 read something uh, about him but uh, he was really a great man uh, and uh uh, you know, when you are very, very young, uh, you, you like, feel like this. I want to be with him, like him, like he is uh, really, really big. So uh, even for education, because we think uh, now I can, uh, uh, I can learn by myself with all this tool, all, all this, uh, you know, upsurge and so on uh by myself but it's not like this you have to you should have a, a someone that drives you this is important this is not uh, don't lose time on this but uh, uh, spend many hours on the other things and try to always to think and um, is is nice because uh uh, I'm 60 now, and uh, uh, I keep learning, keep learning from from the youngest, and uh, and because uh, you you have uh, young uh, young brains, <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's much better than mine, and uh, uh, you see, um, it's very nice to 
to uh, listen ideas. Uh, I, it's very important for me to listen even in, in medical students, the idea or everyone, uh, even for medical students, uh, brilliant, sometimes brilliant idea. I, I uh, remember when uh, the, this surgeon guy, he was, uh, I think, 25, uh, uh, that uh, comes to me and uh, he, he asked me to to put in uh, in our institute uh, a, a printer of this <laughs> of this uh, uh, these tools uh, and it was very strange and no one uh, was believing in him uh, and uh, I, I thought it was a, a great idea and they succeed uh, really uh sometimes you have to to um, think that uh, you can uh, even if you are uh, like a poor guy or if you don't have a possibility to to have uh, many things but uh, an idea is a is a really a big thing is a, a treasure an idea and your uh, brains are treasures much more than the money or the other things exactly so this is amazing and so there's another point that always um, um, fascinates me that if like you have mentioned if someone can actually operate from the remote side he can help those people those patients who cannot be shifted to higher centers and all those surgeons who are working alone like in um, remote areas or somewhere like this where they do not have any specialists uh, supervise super someone who is supervising their surgery and those lesions you know which can be which are some complex lesions which can be operated by only a few neurosurgeons so i think that it could be really helpful and also in war zones because in war zones there are people they actually you know introduce new concepts such as you know the damage control neurosurgery as well which was extended from general surgery a concept that was extended just to save lives so in that case they even had to um, ask other persons who were not neurosurgeons to uh, proceed with some sort of uh, decompressive surgery that can actually save lives so in that case I believe that something like this if a surgeon is there he can actually control uh, the surgery from any part of the world so i believe that it it is it is something that is really important and we should seriously think about that yeah. how much can, can be done like this so there's also a very interesting article that i came across a few days ago they have published that those people uh, who use um, or who use tra for training the virtual reality system the virtual reality system since it imparts a sense of presence those people who use virtual reality have much more improved cognition because they actually have this ability to to be like they feel they are inside the field so it actually helps improves cognition in so many ways in memory and uh, in skills and in all, all those things and in decision making as well so sir how do you think that the application of virtual reality can be helpful in neurosurgery especially since you know there are so many things that learning curve is so long for us there are complicated sometimes people do not have much exposure to this there uh, in our countries there are biases as well because uh, you know uh, it's the competitive field so there all these things uh, are there in in countries like ours so i mean sir i really wish to know your point of view in the application of virtual reality in in neurosurgical training yeah uh, well i think it is uh, is a very important is a very important step uh, and it is a bigger improvement virtual reality in the uh, educational um uh, we should think that uh, if you can perform a, a surgical procedure on uh, this virtual model is not the same uh, on uh, a patient uh, this was a, is a normal thing i um, i was trained uh, especially on patients on so many patients uh, but I was trained uh, uh, on uh, in cadaver labs, okay? Like um, many of, of uh, my generation were trained in, in the cadaver lab. Where you, when uh, I uh, perform with uh, Taco Fukushima and, and others, and uh, um, when uh, I came back in my uh, in my department. Uh, I uh, thought, uh, 
okay, I did uh, five times, uh, seven times on a cadaver. I can do it on a patient. I'm I'm sure that I can do it on a patient. Is uh, is not always like this. A patient is different. Exactly. So we we can keep this in our mind. A simulator is not a patient. You can understand what uh, can be the um, the problems uh, within the surgery during the surgery and so on. But it's different. You are not a, a if you are a great simulator. You are not a, a great surgeon. Uh, <laughs> um, you have uh, to be as we also say uh, to be exposed to a lot of cases as real cases to be a, a good surgeon nowadays i don't know what will be the future because uh, really if uh, a robot uh, uh, driven by artificial intelligence can perform an operation i don't know it will be if uh, it will be possible or not but now uh, they many um uh, many engineers uh, ask us uh, uh, what do you imagine for your future tell me because i can do it i can uh, um, uh, do a, a system an algorithm that uh, uh, put all together and can help you a lot just tell me how you um, think and how you dream your future. So it's up to, to us now to tell uh, the technology how to perform uh, all this, um, this world, uh, this new world. Exactly. So, so basically, it is like a, a like a, um, you know a part of our own tool, and actually does not replace the humans, and not as doctors, not as surgeons, not as patients. Obviously, it's just something like like another help helping hand for us, or a third eye for the neurosurgeon, like many people would say. So, I I believe it's it's wonderful talk and it's a wonderful concept, but obviously, it cannot replace everything that we have been really doing. So, there there's a lot of uh, comments. Yes, so yes, uh, many. <laughs> Uh, there are some questions for example this uh, the last one was uh, how can artificial intelligence can deal with unexpected complication and this is very good question of course uh, the the i think that uh, artificial intelligence uh, even if you put inside a, a lot of things uh, and a lot of complication and so you can expect uh, the complication the artificial intelligence but to deal with uh, an, an unexpected complication or with a complication will be very very difficult i think that uh, we we now we cannot understand what will be the uh, the future in 100 years for our uh, the the son of our son but uh, um, now uh, we can use this artificial intelligence uh, uh, as a tool to suggest to suggest us what to do first of all in indication for surgery you know you now if i think uh, you know i'm an editor of a journal but uh, I, I used to read a lot of, of papers uh, in other journals, of course, but nowadays the um, guidelines, uh, the, the reviews, uh, the different ideas are so many, so many that uh, I, I, I cannot operate anymore if you, I, I keep uh, reading and reading all the day if I can, if I have to read uh, all the uh the papers uh, around the world uh, uh, every day so it's very difficult for me to read uh, all the artificial intelligence can summarize all this and can suggest uh, mm, a solution suggest a solution doesn't mean that we have to do that but of course uh, um, uh, it's much more simple for for us uh, that uh, if we know very well uh, the uh, guidelines of uh, brainstem cavernoma, for example, is uh, uh, we know that uh, we are doing something outside the guideline, for example, and this is it's quite good, I think. 
and uh, a um, an algorithm like this that summarizes all the our uh, uh, guidelines uh, and uh, all the other things uh, could be very useful. Then uh, I exactly, see so this is other. Really this is very important, very sir, important, uh, sir, because, uh, because I guess uh, like uh, it's um, a lot. There are a lot of variation that we do in our practice, and it varies from one uh, person to another. So I guess it is basically something like, like just uh, a helper, like I have already mentioned, sir. Again, thank you very, very much for all these very thorough elaborations. So there are all, so so many questions. I'm so happy yeah. that so many people are taking a lot of interest. There is also a question regarding minimize. Uh, uh, someone has asked in the on the top of it it surely is a solution for minimizing mistakes training young neurosurgeons breaking the barriers for those in developing countries but i think that it can as well promote human dependency so its overall benefit depends on how humans will interpret and use it mm -hmm. so it's a comment uh there is um because uh I think there there has been so so many a lot of interest, yeah. which is very good. Um, do AI scope alone and the metaverse replace the ordinary learning curve due to lack of integrating topics or interactive knowledge uh, built in integration from senior or mentors, or ordinary lab or workshop hands on? I think you have already uh, mentioned uh, it quite nicely that how it can integrate and obviously it cannot replace the normal training. And um, again, so there are so many wishes and thanks to uh, nicely said, if you can accomplish the virtual, there is a higher issue may feel on actual. So obviously that, that's, that's wonderful. So it's again, so it's very, very futuristic and very, it can be helpful, like in good hand, like you have mentioned a fool with the tool is still a fool. So it is the same thing that someone <laughs> has to work on his or her own self first and to develop yeah. a lot of skills. Yes, yeah, so I think in that case only, it could be very, very helpful. So again, thank you so much for, sir, for thank your you. wonderful uh, talk and so interesting and uh, everyone is uh, still amazed and I, I think uh, it was, um, I personally am really thankful to you for spending time on Friday and um, a, a lot of your time. I know you are a very busy person, but uh, it's your generosity. And I think because of um, mentors like you, we are all still thriving and neurosurgery is still progressing even uh, after, you know, the three dark years of pandemic where we thought we could never be able to be back again and we will never progress. And it was really depressive for uh, neurosurgeons, especially of my age group because we thought that uh, we are at a standstill and we won't be able to um, learn anymore so again sir it's a big big thing that you have done and I don't think we have got words to express how grateful we really are so again sir thank you very very much for coming today thank you thank you <laughs> bye see you Thank you so much, sir. See you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for all of you, I have shared the link to the quiz. You just have to complete the quiz and submit it. And the certificate will be automatically generated and emailed to you right in your inbox without any delay. So again, so thank you so much, sir. I've also uh, actually designed a course. I will share the details on my website later, but uh, it is a basic okay. neuroanatomy course, which I have shared, and it does have interactive models in virtual reality that you can see uh, with your VR classes. So it's like giving you a thorough insight, and it it is actually beneficial not only for uh, uh, training neurosurgeons and young neurosurgeons, but there is there are some parts of it which can be helpful for medical students as well. So I believe that I will be sharing the link and I'm so happy to share it with everyone. So okay. thank you so much you. again, sir. And I think that uh, I will have the honor of requesting you again to deliver another lecture on some other topics in, in the near future. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye, sir. Bye, bye. bye. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, well, no, you don't have to perfect the quiz. Uh, for the same reason, I haven't to set any passing percentage. Anyone who will just attempt the quiz, it is just for your own practice. So anyone who will be attempting the quiz will be granted that certificate. I have I haven't, uh, you know, mentioned any passing percentage on that because obviously it's okay. It's just a practice. Just try to use it, try to learn it. Obviously, the right questions will be 
uh, will be shared with you. The right answers will be shared with you. So it's just a learning experience. Thank you very, very much. Okay, obviously it was wonderful to have you around. So I think the, the show was uh, thanks to all of you and all your contributions. You people have written so many wonderful comments and questions and um, it was amazing. And I also wish to tell you that the, the surprise was that I'm actually launching a self-paced course on edX today. It is on basic neuroanatomy. You just have to enroll. It is totally free. It has didactic lectures. It has text. It is. Um, it has virtual reality, VR, 3D interactive models of the skull and the brain, as well as you know, vessels, everything. You will be given an insight on how to read radiographs. And there's a lot of it that you can learn from the basic neuroanatomy course. You can also find common uh, you know, uh, examination findings on it. So there's everything uh, possible, which is, and it's not like a very, very advanced level. It is all very basic. So you don't have to worry about it. Everyone can do this. It is amazing. You will like it so much. So uh, yeah, a uh, very interesting topic. It is dealing with actuality. Please, more webinar like this. Oh, sure. Yes, I will do. I will be so happy to do so. And um, please do um, subscribe to my YouTube channel and to join my WhatsApp group and just uh, send me a message. You can email me. I'm sharing you my email address and send me your suggestions. What do you want to see in our next webinar? So I will be so happy to, yes, uh, obviously I'm also looking forward to seeing you in the next webinars. Okay, Rati, I, I share you, I share you the link. It's okay. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's somewhere above, I just share the link again, you will be happy to get it. You just don't need any passing uh, grade, okay? So no worries about it. Yes, this is the link, Riti. You can do this, please. Uh, the notifications on, I'd uh, like to follow. Thank you so much, Belle. Please do keep in touch. Okay, Rati, I will be sharing this you with you. It is actually on my, uh, just wait, I share you my link. It is actually on my website. Just, uh, yes, please, this is my website. And um, you can, uh, visit this website and I run um, an independent free LMS course uh, school, which is known as the new school. It is everything on my website is totally free of cost. So there is nothing uh, that you need to pay on for any of the things that are uh, that is available on my web page. And this is the link to the course I've been talking about. I will be sharing a demo uh, because I know that I need to give you an introduction of how to get enrolled and how to use all the content, all, all the things that I have added in it and all the content. So I will be sharing a video on it. Um, it is a self-paced course. Uh, what a time certificate given. Uh, to, um, uh, kindly, Dr. Rasim, just check your email, your inbox, uh, so that you can find it. It is in your inbox because it will be emailed directly to you. I have just given it a trial run, and uh, I think it is um, it will be there in your inbox. I will soon be sharing a video demonstrating how to use the edX um, course. It is self-paced and you will be having, um, you know, um, everything on your own page. You don't have to hurry. Um, you don't have to be fast because it is uh, a self-paced course. So again, thank you very, very much for joining. I'm once again sharing um, the link to my whatsapp group and to my youtube channel so that you can all have um you, you can all keep in touch with uh, everything that i've been doing lately and um, we can actually um,
Uh, yes, okay. Yes, certificate is, uh, because it is auto-generated, it will be emailed directly to you without any hassle and without any wait. Uh, I think it was the most uh, easiest and the most convenient way. Thank you, Dr. Isam al Uh You have been doing great as well. You're with your all your groups. I know being neurosurgeons, all of us, uh, it is uh, so important for us to keep in keeping ourselves updated all the time in neurosurgical topics as well as uh, topics like uh, which are futuristic again, which are new. So I think that uh, this, um, this is something which is really essential for us. So I'm logging off with the hope to see you and I wish to see you all and meet you all again. There is another webinar, which is the, which I've been, um, you know, planning for next month and I will be circulating the uh, information soon on my WhatsApp group. So just stay in touch and um, hope to see you all soon. So bye-bye.